Thank you very much indeed. I'm delighted to be here talking to so many of you and the team of Autodesk people and, re and resellers at this very, very classy, impressive conference. But the theme of my talk may surprise you just a little bit. It's how you can actually, as, an, as the Autodesk team, work less, but also achieve more. As Scott just said, trying harder doesn't work, so let's try trying less. I'm going to stick my neck out and say that most of you here today work much too hard. And as a result, <laughs> and as a result of working too hard, you produce much too little result relative to what could be produced. I'm going to reveal a secret how you, every member of the team, can actually multiply your effectiveness to achieve results that are many times more valuable than you've achieved already, no matter how valuable those things that you've achieved already are. To deploy your energy far more intelligently, to work no harder than you do at the moment, and perhaps quite a lot less hard, while getting results that are not just a bit better than the results today, but are hugely better. The secret to success, I'm going to suggest this afternoon, is to get more from less. More from less. That's really the theme of, of this last session. And over the next few minutes, we're going to see how. One of my favorite quotations comes rather oddly, perhaps, from a Prussian army officer called General von Manstein who had this to say about his people. He said, there are only four types of officers. First, there are the lazy, stupid ones. Now, did he suggest firing these people? Not at all. He said, leave them alone. They do no harm. Because <laughs> at least they're lazy. Second, there are the hardworking, intelligent ones. Now, they're good, obviously. They make excellent staff officers, ensuring that every aspect of a plan is very carefully considered. And third, there are the hard-working, stupid ones. Now, these people, he said, he'd really got in for these, these people are a menace. They must be fired at once. They create irrelevant work for everybody. <laughs> and finally, there are the intelligent, lazy ones. Now, these people are suited for the highest office. So the good general was suggesting that whether you're smart or intelligent, it's actually much better to be lazy. Is this a silly paradox? Well, visualize it. Do you think that Warren Buffett is busy frantically crunching numbers at his desk? Do you think that's what Rupert Murdoch spends his time doing? Do you imagine that Jim Clark does that, rather than thinking about boats that he's going to sail? What's the value that Bill Gates added to the world a function of the hours that he put in? Or what about Ronald Reagan, who famously said, it's true hard work never killed anyone, but I figure, why take the chance? <laughs> or John F. Kennedy, or Winston Churchill, or Albert Einstein, or Isaac Newton. What all these people do or did was spend time creatively on the few essentials, and little or no time on the mass of trivia that engulfs all of us most of the time. Most life especially most business life, is trivia. Don't work to deal with the trivia, work to avoid the trivia. Save yourself for one or two things each week that are really important in terms of getting results. Spend time deciding what those things are. Then work out how to deal with them. Then spend time considering and reconsidering and preparing. And then go and get to what you want. Because, ladies and gentlemen, few things really matter. But they matter a tremendous amount. These things that really matter are often difficult to find. But once you find the few things that really matter, they give you tremendous power. The power that gives you more from less. The power of the 80-20 principle. Now, let me just say a little bit about that power, the power that can be liberated by the team here. It lies in one phrase, which is finding the vital few in the trivial many. As, as many of you know, I'm sure, the 80-20 principle asserts that a minority of causes, inputs, or effort 
usually leads to the great majority of results from those causes. A good benchmark, really a hypothesis, is that 80% of results come from 20% of causes. Typically, a few products, maybe 20%, or often much less than that, account for 80% of a company's sales. More importantly, 20% of, of sales will account for 80% of profits. And even more important than that, 20% of customers will account for 80% of profits. And 